the continuation of our topic of gaseous action and respiration the facilitator in this session I am Dr. Mlelo and we are going to continue so today we are going to discuss about the adaptation of oxygen carriage and the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve so uh, let's start with the adaptation of oxygen carriage uh, different animals they should adapt to uh, different uh, mechanisms of uh, carrying oxygen but here we are uh, discussing more about human being because uh, this is our organism of concern. So, an efficient respiratory pigment really picks up oxygen at the respiratory surface and releases it on the arrival at the tissues. Uh, we have discussed this concept several times and as we said in uh, several ways that uh, one among the, the uh, unique characteristics of the respiratory pigment is that they they can bind reversibly with oxygen that means they are binding with oxygen in presence of a high concentration but in presence of low concentration they tend to uh, to release oxygen so these are uh, may appear contradictory as a substance with a high affinity for oxygen is unlikely to release it easily so we'll discuss later about the effects of substances such as carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide um, can react with oxygen, but having high affinity with oxygen as compared with hemoglobin, it cannot uh, be reversed. So the reaction it is only single direction. The reaction is only single direction and cannot be reversed. But in the case of the respiratory pigment, the issue is, is different in that it can uh, take place in both the direction that means it can bind with oxygen in high concentration and it can release uh, oxygen in low concentration so respiratory pigment overcome the problem by having a high affinity for oxygen when its concentration is high but it is reduced but it is reduced when the concentration of oxygen is low that means the affinity of respiratory pigment to oxygen is low when the concentration or partial pressure of oxygen is also low and we are resolving this because in the in the uh, gaseous exchange surface that means in the lungs the amount of oxygen is high so the affinity of oxygen to the respiratory pigment is high and uh, in the respiring tissues that, he, that means peripheral tissues the concentration of oxygen is low, so also the affinity of oxygen to hemoglobin is low. So we are saying that oxygen concentration is measured by partial pressure, otherwise called the oxygen tension. Partial pressure, that means we have studied it in the states of matter, to measure the amount of our molecules of oxygen and bazo cause pressure plane. Partial pressure is the pressure of a substance if it could occupy the container itself only. So normally atmospheric pressure is approximately mia moja kilopascos or one atmosphere, one atmosphere or mia moja kilopascos. As oxygen make up to 21% of the atmosphere, the oxygen tension that is partial pressure of atmosphere is around 21 kilopascos because it, uh, it makes 21% of the atmospheric pressure. With its low solubility of oxygen that diffuse from alveoli, only about 1.5% of oxygen is transported, dissolved in the plasma. The remaining 98.5 diffuses into the red blood cells and chemically combine with hemoglobin. Each red blood cell, they are approximately, uh, they are approximately uh, 250 million of hemoglobin in each red blood cell. 
there are approximately 200, um, 250 million of hemoglobin molecules in each red blood cell. So, what we are saying here is there are about 1.5% of oxygen is transported in solution, dissolved in solution, but 98.5 diffuses into the red blood cell and is carried by hemoglobin. Why? It is because the solubility of uh, oxygen in water or in plasma is very small. So in the absence of the hemoglobin, which is the compound which is carrying oxygen, that means oxygen carriage, it could be impossible. Each hemoglobin molecule consists of globin, globin portion possessed of four polypeptide chain protein and four iron containing group called the heme group. Now, always here there is the weak uh, covalent bond which is formed between oxygen and hemoglobin. That's why some of the students they are asking that in the blood there are all conditions for us to be formed, but why there is no formation for us? The reason behind it is that uh, in the blood there is no a chemical reaction which is taking place between iron 2 and oxygen. So, in the outside environment, the reaction between iron 2 and oxygen results in, in the formation of iron 3 oxide. In the presence of um, in the presence of, of water, that means iron two reactive oxygen in the presence of water to form iron three oxide, which is what we call is rust, the reddish brown substance. What you call is rust. So in the blood, the reaction cannot take place because oxygen does not react with iron two, but it tend to bind to iron two by weak um, covalent bond, and that weak covalent bond, which is the pole, that bond uh, is stronger when the concentration of oxygen is high. And that bond is weaker when the concentration of oxygen is low. So in conditions where the concentration of oxygen is high, that means that bond will be stronger. And then oxygen will bind to hemoglobin and it will be carried. But if the concentration of oxygen decreases, then the bond will be weak and the oxygen will be released. Now let's move to the next page and let's see how the, our discussion continues. So uh, what we are saying here is that each hemoglobin molecule each hemoglobin molecule can transport up to four molecules of oxygen because each ion can bind one oxygen molecule, can bind, not react. That's why there is no formation for us, as I have, I have explained earlier. So in the region of the body where partial pressure of oxygen or, or uh, oxygen concentration is high, such as in the lungs, hemoglobin combined with oxygen to form an unstable intermediate compound called the oxyhemoglobin. So uh, this is what we describe as an unstable intermediate compound. That means uh, it can be it can be broken anywhere where the concentration of oxygen is low. So hemoglobin plus four oxygen, four oxygen molecules to get hemoglobin eight in the in the lungs. The oxyhemoglobin is transported by the blood, and in the region where oxygen is low, or in the region where the partial pressure of oxygen is low. Partial pressure of oxygen is low, such as in the body muscles, it dissociates into oxygen and hemoglobin. That is HbO8 to form Hb plus 4 molecules of, form, uh, of oxygen. So, uh, that was the discussion on how a bloody, it is, uh, it, is trans it is adapted to transport oxygen around the body. Now, let's see how the concept of oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve um, as we discussed that in oxygen tend to bind to hemoglobin and in the respiring tissues oxygen tend to to be dissociated from hemoglobin as we said process by oxygen in a toka kwenye hemoglobin you call it the dissociation so because oxygen you can bind kwenye hemoglobin the process of um, a release of oxygen from hemoglobin you call it the dissociation so there is the curve which explains the phenomena how oxygen tend to be dissociated from hemoglobin and we call it the oxygen, dis, uh, oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. Now, when a respiratory pigment such as hemoglobin is exposed to a gradual increase in oxygen tension, it absorbs oxygen easily at first, but less readily as the tension continues to rise. So, a hemoglobin yenyewe Unavongeza oxygen wa kwanza. Yule oxygen ana, anakuwa kama anafanya zile bond of hemoglobin ziwe readily to accept the second the second oxygen. Lakini the oxygen tension increases baadaye inakuwa very difficult for the uh, hemoglobin molecule to accept more oxygen. 
and sometimes this question it is asked in the exam kwamba kwa nini um, the oxygen hemoglobin curve it is s shaped or it is sigmoid shaped that is because of the nature of hemoglobin and how it accept it accept oxygen that is at first when you expose hemoglobin uh, in the region where there is a high concentration of oxygen at first it receives uh, oxygen rapidly or quickly but later the uh, ability of hemoglobin to accept oxygen tend to decrease so the curve becomes s shape so we are saying that this relationship between oxygen tension and the saturation of hemoglobin is called as oxygen dissociation curve the relationship between oxygen tension relationship between oxygen tension and the saturation of hemoglobin is called the oxygen dissociation curve the greater the co concentration of partial pressure of oxygen the more saturation or the more saturated hemoglobin combined with the oxygen so the degree to which the hemoglobin to which the hemoglobin is saturated at different oxygen partial pressure can be measured and and through percentage saturation and the graph the graph of percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen can be plotted so uh, let's move to the next page and let's uh, we can see how uh, this graph this graph appears because this graph it is s shaped so we, uh, let's see how if we draw this graph if we plot it how it appears so now when we are we are plotting the graph um, the graph of uh, partial pressure when we are plotting the graph uh, if the graph of percentage saturation of hemoglobin against oxygen tension percentage saturation of hemoglobin against oxygen tension is plotted and we call it as oxygen dissociation curve is plotted it is found to be s shaped or sigmoid ko tukiplot hiyo graph tutaiona kama ni ni sigmoid so there are different explanation about the fatia lakini as i told you one among the reason why it is sigmoid it is because of the nature of hemoglobin how it tend to combine with oxygen so the graph show that at at an oxygen partial pressure of approximately 30 mm of mercury only 50% of hemoglobin is present is oxyhemoglobin and at a partial pressure of 0 no oxygen is attached to hemoglobin molecule that means uh, the amount of oxygen binding to hemoglobin increases with the partial pressure of oxygen 100 saturation is rare is rarely achieved in natural conditions the s shape of the curve is physiologically important the s shape of the curve is physiologically important kwa hiyo tunasema ni physiologically important kwa sababu hiyo s shape inategemea na release of uh, i mean binding of oxygen to to hemoglobin and it is released to body tissues no matter how much it is physiologically important so over this over the over the steep part of the curve a small decrease in oxygen partial pressure of the environment will bring about a large fall in the percentage saturation of hemoglobin so the oxygen given up by the pigment in such situation is available to tissues so tenda kuona kuna steep part ya hiyo graph na kwenye hiyo steep part kinachokuepo ni kwamba uh, tunapokuwa tuna decrease even small amount of uh, small amount of partial pressure of oxygen kutakuwa kuna percentage saturation ya, ya hemoglobin itapungua sana kwa sababu gani kwa sababu kwenye mazingira kama hayo uh, hemoglobin huwa inakuwa ina release oxygen to the to the respiring tissues so it is precisely it is precisely those oxygen partial pressure which are likely to be found in tissues which bring about large large release of oxygen kwa kinachosababisha ni kwamba tunakuwa tuna low oxygen partial pressure in the tissues and thus the low oxygen partial pressure in the tissues allow them uh, allow the oxygen to be released fast so that it can uh, it can be uh, used in the tissues so the different hemoglobins found in the animal vary in the affinity for oxygen the oxygen dissociation curve for a number of animals they are different uh, however uh, the difference in the oxygen dissociation curve is because of the 
metabolic nature or metabolic condition of the, of the animal because animals they require oxygen for metabolism so difference in the metabolism or difference in the rate of metabolism will lead to a uh, different in difference in the uh, difference in the I mean difference in the nature of metabolism will lead to difference in the nature of the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve because there will be difference in the requirement of oxygen by these animals and hence the requirement for uh, oxygen for respiration is different and hence the oxygen dissociation curve will be different so um, if, if, you, if you want to, to investigate the oxygen dissociation curve for different animals you can understand these two facts or you can see these two facts first uh, the more the, the curve of the a particular pigment is displaced to the right Kama curve is displaced to the right the less readily it picks up oxygen but the more easily it releases it kotunavona curve imeenda kulia it is displaced to the right that means the compound less readily accept oxygen but it is easier to release oxygen so that is the displacement to the, to the right like in you turn it to the next page and then you can see how if it is displaced uh, to the left so uh, if the curve is displaced to the, the left the more the dissection curve of a particular pigment is displaced to the left then the more readily it picks up oxygen but the less readily it releases it so in any case kama a curve may quite displaced to the to the left now here we have the, the example of the oxygen uh, hemoglobin dissociation curve na kama unavyoza kuona hii curve our curve is s shaped so we have a um, percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen from 0 10 20 30 40 50 to 100 so this is sometimes we call it as p50 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 ni uh, ni kama concentration of oxygen or oxygen tension ya bio it has abisha 50% saturation of hemoglobin so this uh, is what you can call it the, the, the p50 lakini from there unaona our curve is s shaped so from there it goes up it goes up and then so this is what we call it the steep part in this part a small change in the concentration will lead to a large change in the percentage saturation now let's see uh, one thing which I want to illustrate here so that it will be easier for you to understand what, what do I talking about so let's say um, let I take my pen here and I want to illustrate one thing here so that it can be easier for you to to understand what I'm talking about now uh, let's say we take this part assuming this part um, if the partial pressure of oxygen here it is 5 now for this part uh, let's say it is 2.5 for this part let's say it is 2.5 now assuming the change of uh, oxygen partial pressure because uh, here it is oxygen oxygen tension that is oxygen partial pressure now assuming we have changed the, the partial pressure of oxygen from 0 to 2.5 what will happen to the percentage saturation of oxygen it will be saturated only for 10 percent so have you seen decreasing the, the 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 partial pressure of oxygen by 2.5 by 2.5 have changed the percentage saturation of hemoglobin only by 10 percent but now again i assume we have changed it from this point to this point it is 2.5 again but how much the percentage saturation of uh, hemoglobin have changed it is from 10 to 50 do you see so we have changed 2.5 again it is 2.5 again but we have changed the partial pressure of oxygen by 2.5 but the percentage saturation of hemoglobin imebadilika pakubwa now again let's say we are drawing a line here and if at this line maybe it's at midpoint between 5 and 10 so it is 7.5 now if we assume uh, we draw the straight line from here maybe to here and then we can see the change from uh, from 5 to 7.5 by how much percent the partial pressure I mean the percentage saturation of hemoglobin have changed due to this change you can see 
it is about from 50 to about 85 so it's about 35 so you can see in this steep part let's say um from here 2.5 to 7.5 we have a change of about from 10 to 80 so for about 70 75 percent saturation 75 percent saturation of hemoglobin so in this portion we are saying that a very small change in oxygen tension will lead to a higher decrease in the in the percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen now as you can see uh, in this portion the loading of oxygen is somehow quicker and as you can see also the loading of oxygen here is quicker but as the oxygen tension increases the loading of oxygen becomes difficult if it reaches uh, 95 you see at this point which is 95 uh, this is the maximum a uh, maximum point of loading so from here to reach 100% uh, under normal saturation normal saturation it is impossible so loading tension is measured at 95 saturation 95 saturation as hemoglobin is never 1% saturated at normal environmental oxygen tension like any unloading tension is measured at 50% saturation as hemoglobin never releases all of its oxygen under normal condition. Like in, uh, the physiological mechanisms behind this, why hemoglobin it is never 100 uh, saturation under, under normal condition or why hemoglobin does, uh, does not release all of its oxygen under normal condition, it's not for your level. So we have uh, we have another another graph which uh represent the oxygen hemoglobin situation curve also here so we have an, another graph which showed the oxygen hemoglobin situation curve we have another graph here which show the oxygen hemoglobin situation curve and, and and i want to show it so that it could be easier for you to to understand me so our graph is here and again this uh the oxygen this uh oxygen hemoglobin distribution curve and in this curve uh we are discussing the concept of be having uh different oxygen distribution curve in different animals corners of corner up 100 percent saturation 50 kuna zero and then this is the oxygen um uh, oxygen oxygen hemoglobin station cup for different animals here we have the the llama then we have human and then we have the uh we have another animal here but what you can see this is mouse and the, here is the llama here the human so the the discussion is the same the discussion is the same as we said that in uh, the at uh, the concentration i mean as we said, the, the size of the animal decreases, the size of the animal decreases, the rate of metabolism tend to increase. So for example here, for example here in our case, okay, sorry, I wanted to, to illustrate here. For example here in our case, uh, we have the llama, then we have human, and then we have the, uh, we have mouse. So mouse, it is, uh, it is small in size. Here, the llama it is larger in size than human. So, the rate of metabolism by llama it is smaller as compared to human as compared to mouse. So, mouse being higher metabolizer, because I'm going to high metabolism, that means at itaji more oxygen. Because the graph will be displaced with the light, that means at ana unload, tunasema at ana release more oxygen to the tissues. So, kiona oxygen distribution curve we made right, that means analyze more oxygen to the tissues for respiration now can okay, oxygen distribution curve me kuja left that means analyze less oxygen now come analyze less oxygen what does it imply okay release less oxygen manako una imply kwamba wewe hauhitaji sana oxygen for respiration ko bila shaka huyu atakuwa na small surface area to volume ratio for losing heat as compared to humans and mouse so mouse being small it, uh, it has a large surface area to volume ratio and therefore lose heat rapidly to compensate for this it has a higher metabolic rate 
ili iweze ku, kufanya uh, compensation of heat lost and the higher metabolic rate inahitaji ina high consumption for oxygen so the higher metabolic rate needs high consumption of oxygen that the mechanism behind the higher respiratory rate in in, in rats as compared to human and the llama so there will be difference between the oxygen dissection curve of the three animals so this marks the end of our discussion about the uh, adaptation to oxygen carriage and the oxygen hemoglobin dissection curve in the next session we'll be discussing about the factors influencing the hemoglobin oxygen binding affinity the affinity by which oxygen binds to hemoglobin and if you need these notes you can go to the Kipaji app, you can go to the Play Store, then download the Kipaji app, then search for the uh, Dr. Mlelo, uh, Geisha's Exchange and Respiration Notes. And then, yeah, you can get these notes at the year here, how I'm teaching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and then to share the video to your fellow students. Thank you and let us wish you nice studies.